Problem 8.1-2. The following stress element represents the stress state at point A of the structure in problem 7.2-2. Draw the element when rotated to the principal stress condition. Also draw the element when rotated to the maximum in-plane stress condition. Here is the element. It was the solution to problem 7.2-2. We have normal stress in the vertical direction in compression and a shear stress in the uh, negative sense on the element with values given. The first thing to do is find the normal stresses in the x and y direction and also the shear stress and that's all taken from the volume element. We see there is no tension in the x or the horizontal direction so that'll just be zero. Negative sign sigma y and a negative sign on tau xy. The next thing I've done is written the equation for principal stresses. Here it is. And it's written in terms of sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. And it gives us both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are two principal stresses with the plus and minus sign here between the two terms. And sigma 1 is the first term plus the second term. Sigma 2 is the first term minus the second term. And it gives us these values. These are the values of our principal stresses. Next I'm going to find what angle we need to rotate the element uh, in order to uh, change the stress state from the element shown to the principal stress state. Now I've written the equation to find theta p, that's the angle we need to rotate the element to get to our principal stresses. And theta p, plugging in values for sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, we get a value negative 22.5 degrees. So we'll be rotating our element clockwise, 22.5 degrees, to get to the principal stress state. Now I'm going to draw my stress element in the uh, rotation of the principal stresses that we calculated above. And so here I've drawn the element, it's a square element, and I've rotated it in the clockwise direction, 22.5 degrees. And uh, on one face we'll have sigma 1, and on another face we'll have sigma 2. And which face is which? Well, we can tell using, uh, by using our general stress transformation equations. Here I've used the sigma x prime equation. I've input the values for sigma x and sigma y and tau xy into the equation. And for theta, I input the value for theta p that we got here above. And it gave me the answer of 10.94 megapascals, which is our sigma 1 value we calculated up here. What this means is the x face on the element, or what was the x face before I rotated it, and now in rotation, uh, that's this face here. It is now the x prime face. That is the uh, face that has the 10.94 megapascals. Now I also could have used the sigma y prime equation and inputting a value of theta p of negative 22.5 degrees uh, I would have gotten a, a result from the sigma y prime equation of negative 63.74 megapascals. That would have told me that this face here was uh, was sigma 2. Now there are no shear stresses when we have our element rotated to the principal stresses. So that is uh, so the first part of the problem is complete. Okay, for the next part of the problem, we are going to be calculating the maximum in-plane shear stress. And here's the equation for that. And the values, I've rewritten them, sigma x, sigma y, tau xy. And now you have probably noticed that this equation is identical to the second half of the principal stress equation above. Let me look at that. Right here. And we previously calculated a value for that. It was 37.34 megapascals. So I've written from above, the tau max in plane, that's the maximum in plane shear stress, is equal to 37.34 megapascals. Now I've written the equation to solve for theta s. That's the angle with which we need to rotate our stress element in order to get to the maximum in plane shear stress condition and plugging in the values for sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, I get a value of 22.5 degrees. That's uh, 45 degrees off of the theta p value, which is always the case. Now I've written the equation for calculating the average normal stress when we have rotated the element to the 
max in plane shear stress condition. And we recognize that the equation is the first term in the principal stress equation. Looking up back up to the principal stress equation, which is here, here's that first term. We calculated it to be a value of negative 26.4 megapascals. And that's what I've written here. Now I'm going to draw my stress element rotated to the maximum in-plane shear stress condition. And that means it's going to be rotated counterclockwise, 22.5 degrees, that's theta s. And there's going to be shear on all four sides, but what direction is it? Is it positive or negative? Our equation that we use above for maximum in-plane uh, shear stress will always give a positive value because it's the square root of the sum of the squares. In order to find the direction of shear stress on this element, I use the equation for general stress transformation tau x prime y prime. And plugging in values for sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, and also for theta using the value for theta s, which is 22.5 degrees. And that equation gives me a value of negative 37.34 megapascals. Now 37.34 megapascals is the magnitude of the shear stress that we previously calculated, but the negative sign shows the direction. We're going to have shear stress on this element in the negative sense. That means that on what was the x face here, the shear arrow will be pointing downward, and what was on the y face, it will be pointing to the left and it will have a magnitude of 37.34 megapascals. And there will also be normal stress on all four sides, and then it will be equal to our average normal stress calculated here, which is 26.4 megapascals. Negative means compression. And here we have the stress element in the maximum in-plane shear stress condition. And we're done.